Hey, hoop ballers, are you into sports betting? Do you want to know why a certain game has a funky line? Well, Hoop Ball has you covered. Today in sports betting is a great addition to all your handicapping questions with hosts Ira Silver and Devin Ellington. We break down game lines and future bets on all sports and try to make some money along the way. Follow us on Twitter at Hoop Ball Gaming, at Ira Silver Magic, and at D-A-L-E-007. And download Today in Sports Betting in the App Store, Google Play, and available on Spotify. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Good morning and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Micah Patria. Joined by none other than the wonderful Aaron Asmus to break down this Thursday, August 20th card. Uh, we have four games on. It's the second game in this uh, in this set of playoff games for a lot of these teams. But we have a lot of action. We have a lot of guys that we're still going to be monitoring some news, but we got a lot to break down. It's been an awesome playoffs thus far. Uh, I think everyone's enjoying it, especially with these few a few upsets. But Aaron, how are you doing? How, how have you been enjoying this hoops uh, from basically lunchtime till bedtime? I mean, you know, it's any chance I can get to tilt my face off for, you know, seven, eight hours a day. You know, I just I just got to do it, you know, <laughs> especially that the magic slate a couple of days ago or the magic game where all the four of the value plays just smashed. And I was just like, oh, no, I'm dead. And thankfully, I still got there. So, hey, that's <laughs> the beauty of DFS, I guess. Yeah, I was actually feeling the same way. I had uh, I had some Enos. I had some Clark that day. I had some Fultz. Uh, Fultz was actually, you know, massively owned on DK. We're gonna we're gonna get to that game tonight because they're playing again. But you're right, all those value plays hit. Uh, Orlando came out, you know, upset Milwaukee, and it's crazy because they can upset this team, and then they come in the very next game, and the spreads even <laughs> they're getting even more points handed to them uh, yeah. after winning one. Uh, so that that just goes to show you what Vegas is thinking, and. Uh, you know, we, we won't spoil it. It's the third game on the docket, so we'll just jump right into this. But before we do, just a quick shout-out to our presenting sponsors, Manscaped. These guys are absolutely phenomenal. Go check them out. Uh, they got the Lawnmower 3.0. They got the Perfect Package Kit, which comes with a nice conditioner. It comes with a toner. It comes with a nice T-shirt, and it comes with 3.0. It's a fantastic package. Use the promo code HOOPBALL20, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L-2-0, and you will get free shipping plus 20% off your order so go guys go check them out but let's jump right into this brother miami heat versus the indiana pacers this is uh obviously the second time that these two teams are facing off during the playoffs they faced off a ton during the regular season uh but in the last one the heat squeaked it out 113 101 not really a squeak out but uh as far as a spread and a game total goes right now this game looks like it's coming in at a 215 over under and uh, Miami's being favored by four so it is in fact the lowest uh, spread that is on the night right now yep. but there's still going to be some value in there I think I think there's still some guys that we can look at so we'll start with this Miami team uh, and we'll, we'll start with the backcourt uh, Goran Dragic came out absolutely exploded in the game that he started played 34 minutes looks great took 19 shot attempts so 5900 are you willing to go back to the well on him yeah, so I think one general theme, and I'm, I'm going to be touching on this in my article today as well, is I think we want to be really careful about overreacting to really great game one performances and still, you know, make good logical decisions and, you know, just don't over, really stay price sensitive to certain guys. So like Goran Dragic in the last slate, you know, he was just an automatic free square. If you didn't play him, you know, you really need to listen to more of our content because, um, he, you know, he was just the, he was just the free square of the slate at 5,900 here. This is kind of priced appropriately for him. You know, I, he does have, there are a couple guards behind him. It's, he's, a, it's a little more volatile of a spot when you, when you're having to pay almost 6k for him. So in terms of cash games, I'm, you know, I haven't finished going through all my build iterations yet, but 
my initial lean is he's kind of more of a tournament play with more balanced builds as opposed to kind of being a core play for um, both both GPPs and in cash games. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I do think he's priced appropriately now. Um, 5,900 is kind of what we're used to seeing. But, you know, the one thing that we're not used to seeing with him is him being in that starting lineup. And I think, you know, it's almost like reverse. Generally, when we see a high usage guy come off the bench, it's what we like to see. But, um, you know, between him, Butler, and Bam, I think that they're going to have to keep this volume up for him. 19 shot attempts is absolutely fantastic. The peripheral stats were just about where they should be. So I'm not ready just to, you know, completely write him off. I'm with you in cash, maybe maybe not so much. But, you know, he presented that 40-point upside. I think we're looking at probably around like a 25 to 28-point floor if he's going to be taking, you know, playing 34-plus minutes and taking this many shot attempts. So, right. you know, I, I still do have some interest with him. With that being said, I mean, Kendrick Nunn, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think that's done with. Uh, he was a DNPCD. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's just because of, you know, him struggling when he when he got back, maybe, you know, not acclimated enough, whatever it may be. Maybe want a few more. Pra- I, I have no idea. I would expect some sort of run out of him whatsoever. But um, if they're going to lean that heavily on Dragic again, I, 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 I could take another look at him. But um, I'm with you. The, the price tag is up there now. Forty four hundred was a was 100 percent of free square. But uh, how about Bam and Jimmy Butler? I mean, four hundred dollar difference between these two on DK. Uh, Bam 7,500 Butler is 79. Uh, do you prefer one of these guys over the other? Yeah. So I think pairing them in the last slate was a really popular, uh, cash game iteration. Um, as opposed if you didn't go with, um, two expensive studs, you pretty much went stud, Jimmy Butler, Bam, and some more kind of mid tier value guys. Um, and what I like about them is they're kind of in the same spot. You know, and they really didn't see all that much of a price hike. Jimmy Butler only increased three hundred bucks. Bam only increased a hundred bucks. So if we liked them in the last slate, and they're more or less in the same, um, you know, it's pretty much the same game context. Um, I probably prefer Bam just from a from a positional uh, position positional way. Uh, just because the center is pretty weak on this slate overall, mm-hmm. and he's he's just a little bit cheaper. But I think both guys are firmly in play uh, for cash game builds. Couldn't have said any better myself. Yeah, I'm with you. I think both are very, very much in play. Uh, anytime either one of these guys are under 8K, uh, I perk up a little bit. It's not the best matchup. It is the lowest total. Um, but the center position, like you said, that's where I'd probably lead more Bam. Bam's also played very well against Indiana this year. Um, you know, it's outside a good of that, against Miles. Yeah, Turner. absolutely. And you know, Miles Turner is a great defender. He's a great shot blocker. Don't get me wrong, but the way that Bam can pass on the inside and on the interior and just break down defenses is fantastic. And they don't really have another guy to just go to. I mean, T.J. Warren's been cooking up and down the court. Don't get me wrong, and you'll, he, he has been getting steals. Uh, I don't want to take that away from him, but Bam's, Bam's passing is elite at, uh, from the center position. Uh, and yeah. even outside of the last game, they played back on the 10th. And, you know, it was a limited minutes type of game. Bam only played 22 minutes, but he still put up 32.25 DK points in those 22 minutes. So uh, I'm with you. I probably prefer Bam over Butler. I'll have shares of both. And then I, I didn't even mention the injury report. I probably should have started with that, so I do apologize. But Jay Crowder is actually questionable for this one. Uh, he has, uh, looks like left ankle sprain, um, decent chance he could sit out. And, uh, if he does sit out, do you anticipate, uh, anybody kind of, you know, capitalizing off the minutes and then somebody that we might be able to use for DFS? Yeah, I think the, cause Indy plays small for the most part, you know, they, you know, they Warren is kind of that three, four flex wing, Jakar Sampson. He's kind of the same thing. They'll play Doug McDermott at the four. Um, so my inclination is they go small where they move, they can move Iguodala into the starting lineup and have him defend Warren or, um, or have Jimmy on Warren, have Iggy on the wing. Um, and, or they could even put Jimmy at the four, honestly, in this matchup and then have more kind of Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic lineups. Um, Mm -hmm. so I think those guys would be where I would lean if Jay Crowder would be out. I'm not sure like Myers Leonard would really get in the rotation. Um, obviously, 
I think Duncan Robinson would probably be a little bit better of a value, and he got, you know, he's only thirty nine hundred on this slate, and I, he did get cut for his lack of defense in the last game, but you know, if he gets back up to thirty minutes, that we might be really value starved. I think, uh, especially if Jay Crowder's out, I think you could really rely on thirty minutes from Duncan Robinson. So that that would be a play to really keep in mind. That's a good call. I mean, um, I was kind of in the same boat as you with thinking that they would go small and that pretty much eliminates guys like Kelly Olenek and Myers Leonard from uh, being the main beneficiaries, I guess, of, of uh, Jay Crowder sitting. Um, I do think that they'd probably end up starting a guy like Iguodala. Um, maybe not Iguodala because they like having him out as that second unit ball handler. I guess it really depends on if Kendrick Nunn's still in the doghouse or not. Um, but Derek Jones Jr. was not on the injury report. As as most of you probably saw, he left that uh, – that last game with like a scary neck injury. Looks like he got uh, he got carted off, stretched off. Um, but it turns out, I guess it was just a scare. Um, he's been cleared to play. He's expected to play. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see him start the four as well. He could, he could definitely start in that spot. That that's probably a good call. He's he'd probably be the guy who would draw the start if Crowder sat. Yeah, I guess it really depends on if you know. Just because he had he got cleared doesn't mean he's not feeling like a stinger or any after results from. Uh, what happened? It looks like that's exactly what. If I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. I'm by no way, no <laughs> means ever claimed to be. Um, but it looked like he just took one of those hard, hard stingers to the shoulder, maybe, and it kind of hits that nerve where it shoots up. Uh, and I, I, I'm not too sure. I, I really have no idea. But anyways, it's, that's what I'm getting at. So maybe if we see he's in the starting lineup, we could feel a little bit more comfortable about him. Uh, but he's definitely in play at 3K nonetheless. Um, and same thing. I think I agree with you. Uh, Duncan Robinson, 3900. It's too cheap. If Crowder's out, you know, yeah, his minutes were limited due to the defense, but they're not just going to go and throw a ton of minutes at uh, Jones, who's already playing about, you know, 15 on, on a night-to-night basis himself. So I would expect right. a couple of those to, you know, get split off between Duncan and Iguodala. And I, I would be shocked if we're not seeing Duncan um, starting pretty soon, especially with uh, – not starting, I mean, playing full, full complement of minutes again, especially with uh, somebody on the other side that is also uh, questionable. But um, anything else over here? Are you ready to bounce over to Indiana? Let's go to Indy. All right, man. So uh, as far as injuries, just said it. Victor Oladipo, uh, he had his eyes scratched in that last game. Uh, in fact, I believe it was by Bam. Um, and now he is being listed as questionable. More of a game time decision is what they're saying, though. So that is the major news for Indiana. And I think we kind of already know because we've seen this throughout the season, what to anticipate, what to expect from um, this Indiana team when, when Oladipo sits. Uh, and that's generally we're getting Aaron Holiday back in that starting lineup, which I think they did in the last game. I'm pretty sure they did. So, yeah, they did start Holiday at the three. Um, and that's I think they started the, Justin. Oh, ju- okay, that's right. The wrong Holiday. Yeah. Uh, but both both would probably end up getting in the starting lineup with Victor Oladipo out. That would be uh, what I would anticipate. And, I, you know, I think both those guys uh, would be popular value plays. And I, I can't argue with it at 4K and at 3,900. Um, we've seen these guys be staple cash floors and once in a while they have some, you know, tournament upside in there. Um, I would say Aaron probably more than Justin, but why don't you tell me, um, Victor Oladipo sits, where are you kind of looking and gravitating towards? Yeah, I'm a little weirded out about Aaron Holiday's last couple games. Um, you know, especially when Depot went out, um, Aaron Holiday still only got to 16 minutes. Uh, I mean, he did have four fouls, so maybe that was a little bit of foul trouble. But I almost wonder if they don't quite trust him all the way or something. something's a little iffy going on. Um, but if Depot were out, you know, it's 4K, and I don't, I don't see any reason you could predict him for less than, you know, 27, 28 minutes as kind of a absolute floor. So, uh, especially on this slate where we kind of want, we definitely want to prioritize spending on studs. You know, you're going to have to find guys like Aaron Holiday, Justin Holiday, um, and kind of just take the risk on uh, one of these guys really painting out. So, yeah, they would definitely be in play for cash games for me. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, outside of them, uh, you know, the other two main, I guess, options that people are looking at would be like Brogdon and Warren. Uh, and Warren, he showed up uh, after taking a few games off um, in the Jimmy Butler rivalry. He played 38 minutes, uh, shot 9 of 18 for 22 points, 8 boards, a big four steals for 45 and a half DK points. So at 8,100, um, you know, I always look at it just across the side of the ball. Do you prefer him or Jimmy Butler? Uh, Jimmy Butler, not even, not even close. I'm, I'm with uh, you. I, I, it might be a little. I don't. I'm not going to say not close, 
Well, um, for for tournaments, I think Warren's going to have significantly less ownership. You'll probably get him at least three to four times less owned than Jimmy. So if you're playing kind of the big the big field lotteries, um, that that could be a way to go if you're kind of game stacking this. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of Warren, he's going to be on the court. He's going to be chucking a lot. Um, it's just a matter of you know he he shot four or five again from from three. Um, four four steals isn't all that sustainable, to be honest. Um, he's just a super super volatile guy, and I don't know, especially on this slate with LeBron, Giannis, Harden, Dame Lillard, mm-hmm. guys I want to spend on. Uh, I don't know if I want to be investing my money in TJ Warren. Yeah, that's I think what it comes down to. It's going to be all in your build. It's, it's listen. I, I think a lot of people are going to try to get two studs in here, and it's tough. Um, you could make it happen easily, uh, but you're just going to be missing out on a few of those seven to eight K guys. And a couple of those guys are in good spots that people are going to gravitate towards. Um, but it, it all depends on your build, I guess. So, uh, I'm not saying I'm going to go out of my way to play TJ Warren. In fact, I prefer Brogdon over him. Uh, that's probably yeah. the way I would go for 1200 less if Oladipo's out. I mean, even if Oladipo's in, he's still in play, but, uh, with a little bit of a price increase, I prefer him, uh, with Oladipo out, um, but they're they're both very much in play. And I don't think I'll end up on Miles Turner. Uh, he's not a guy that I ever gravitate towards. I just don't like him in this in this matchup. He struggled in this matchup this season, uh, and we we've seen time and time again. Even when we think he's going to be aggressive, he just never is. He's very complacent. A lot of his points uh, come on on defense, uh, or he's having like an eight of ten shooting night, uh, all in which is you know unsustainable on a night to night basis. Yeah, and he, he's just a weird price range, too, at 6800 mm-hmm. Like, either, why would you not just spend $700, or $700 more for BAM? Or if you're paying 6800 for Turner, it likely prohibits you from getting the guys you want in the two-stud build. Um, yeah, I, I agree. There's just, there's just better place, better w- ways to go with your money. Absolutely. Let's keep it moving then, man. We have OKC uh, going against Houston. Uh, in this in this first matchup, we kind of seen Houston run away with it, but we still had some value on both sides of the ball, uh, regardless. So, game total two twenty seven and a half, and Houston is being favored by two and a half. Uh, so the spread's nice and close. That's what we like to see. So we'll start with this OKC game. Uh, we had two big, three big guys that we could look at, um, and I think they're all very much in play. And that was Chris Paul, Danilo Gallinari, and Steven Adams in that last one. Uh, we've seen kind of Schroeder and SGA take a back seat. Both struggled. So um, I think those are the five main options everyone's going to have their eyes on. So out of those five right. guys, uh, who are you really looking at? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to ignore that, that Shea Gilgis Alexander price decrease. He's down all the way down to 6,300. 6, you know, he's still got 35 minutes in a game that was more or less a blowout. Um, so that leads me to believe in a close game, you know, he's going to get four, probably 40, 41, something along there. Um, but at the same time, it was also concerning base Chris Paul kind of really just took over the offense and kinda, where he was much more willing to defer during the regular season to SGA and kind of let him do his thing. Um, he, he, he dominated the ball. Um, let me take one quick look at... Yeah, so, I mean, he had a 23.8% usage rate, 41.5% assist rate, uh, 15.7% rebound rate. Um, dude, yeah, the ball just really didn't leave his hands in this game. Um, I just don't know how he fits with what I want to do uh, with the, uh, with a 2 stud build in cash games. Because um, if you're playing Harden, which I think you are, you're going to play LeBron again or Giannis, I, it's really tough to get CP3 into those builds. Um, but I think if you were going one stud, I would. I think CP3 is definitely in play um, for your cash game builds. So I, w- I would lean towards those two guys, the lead, the lead ball handlers, who I'm really confident in their minutes for in, in just ball control with on this offense. Yeah, I agree. I think Chris Paul's without a doubt the best option on the Thunder. I mean, obviously he's priced accordingly, but 
Um, he's playoff Chris Paul. He looks healthy. He looks good, and that's the most important thing. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said how he was deferring for most of the season, and that's because Chris Paul knew once they were kind of in playoff gear and they, they knew that they were going to be in the playoffs that he could take it down a notch. He can get everybody else ready. Um, he came out there and scored 51 DK points. He did so with 14 shot attempts and still shot 50% of the field. So he was incredibly efficient. The rebounds, the assists um, were probably down for where they could be in such an up-tempo game. So, uh, and it doesn't hurt that he's going against his former team. So I'm, I'm with yeah. you. Chris Paul's a fantastic play if you're not doing the two-stud build. Um, I think Steven Adams, if you're not playing a guy like Bam or maybe you know, if you're not sliding Davis at center, um, is a fantastic play. I think just we've seen time and time again, when it comes down to a guy like Steven Adams, the Thunder aren't necessarily just going to match up and go small for majority of the game. They're going to play Steven Adams a minimum of at least 25 to 30 minutes. And when that happens, Steven Adams is going to get every single rebound on the court. So um, I don't mind paying 5600 for a guy that feels like he has a floor of a double-double at this point in this kind of matchup. Um, yeah. and, if, and if this game stays close and he sees 34, 35 minutes, we're, we're probably looking at 35 to 40 DK points in this sort, sort of matchup on the regular. So... Uh, Adams is kind of a guy that I think can fit even maybe even a two stud build. Um, and then Absolutely. the other guy that I think would fit, it would be Schroeder. I, and I don't mind going back to the well on Schroeder after a poor performance. I prefer him over SGA, uh, played 32 minutes. Keep in mind, this guy was away for a little bit for the birth, uh, birth of his child. Um, but he still came back, played 32 minutes in the blowout, only shot 25% from the field, three of 12 from the field. Um, didn't do much as far as peripherals or everything. Just had an overall bad game, but this is his kind of matchup. Uh, he's averaging just under about 30 DK points against him this season. And you got to imagine that if this game stays a little closer. A lot of these guys, I don't, I don't know if Chris Paul's minutes will get much more than 37, uh, but the guys that had their minutes in like the low 30s, um, they're going to tighten the rotation. You'll probably see a few minutes come away from guys like Terrence Ferguson, uh, who, you know, Played decent 15 minutes, but not not something I'm going to. It's just the the five studs. I've kind of already eliminated SGA out of my pool. Uh, okay. And then I, uh, yeah, I don't I don't I don't think I'm good. I just prefer Schroeder over him. And I think a lot of people are. Cheaper I'm, tag. I don't, yeah, it's cheaper price tag. It's it's the I don't want to have somebody sharing the the starters usage with Chris Paul and uh, Danilo. A, I think this is a fantastic matchup for Danilo Gallinari, and they're going to lean on him heavily. I was, you know, I, I do, I don't mind him at sixty six hundred. It's a five hundred dollar price increase. I was all over him in that last one um, for the same reason. I'm not just going to necessarily hop completely off of him. I expect fully Chris Paul, Danilo Gallinari to kind of absorb all this starters usage, and it's going to be hard for Shea to get his. Uh, give me the guy coming off the bench against the reserves who's going to have that usage. Um, I'm, I'd much rather have Schroeder at fifty five hundred, but. Uh, and I, I kind of just spoke my piece on Gallinari as well. So I don't mind him. Um, I probably would play more Schroeder and Adams, but he just fits a lot of builds. Maybe not as much uh, for the two stud build, though. Yeah, I mean, all these guys, um, Gallo got the price hike, as he said. CP3 got a minor price hike of 300 But Shea is 600 cheaper. Adams is 800 cheaper, which is kind of crazy. And then Schroeder is 600 cheaper. So if, um, I mean, that, this is great buy low opportunities where the, we know virtually all the stats are going to be accumulated by these five guys for the most part. Um, and you're getting them at really great buy low opportunities. So I would absolutely mix all these guys into your tournament mix and probably keep all of them, honestly, uh, within ca- cash consideration. Absolutely. All right, man, let's, uh, let's slide over to Houston. Uh, James Harden, I think, uh, you know, probably everyone's favorite shiny toy to play anytime Russell Westbrook is out, uh, drops 58 DK points in the, in the game before 34 minutes, shot 12 of 22, 11 rebounds, shockingly only at three assists. Um, so there's definitely some, uh, some room for upside in this, but the price tag's up there. You, I think you've already said your piece on him a little bit before, so I'm going to guess you're playing James Harden. Um, but why don't you tell me? Yeah, um, you know, I'm kind of hoping that we're going to see some people hop off him just because he was a little bit disappointing um, in terms of all of the studs for his price tag. Um, so I think that would be a really good indicator of kind of how sharp the field is or how many fish are kind of swimming within all these contests. But again, it's just... His usage rate, all his rates are just out of this world when Russ Westbrook is on the is off the floor. You know he's 
Um, his minutes, his minute ceiling in a close game is going to be four, probably 40, 42, somewhere around, somewhere in that range. Um, the rest of the team was ridiculously hot from the field, so he wasn't um, really needed until kind of for most of the game to kind of put the team on his back and score or facilitate as much. Um, so I could see that easily regressing and then just having more and more usage piled on him in a close, closer game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to play him and everything again and hope some people hop off him. Yeah. And I, I, I don't mind it, man. I'm, I'm going to have some shares of James Harden. I'm not going to sit here and act like I won't. I will definitely have some shares of James Harden. Um, and I don't think that's a hot take or anything. It doesn't matter what James Harden's price tag is, but he's getting this kind of usage. We're talking about a playoff game. Uh, yeah. Give me a couple of shares. I think Covington at 6K, nice little price decrease uh, from that last game. He dipped about 500. I just never play Covington since he's joined the Rockets. It's not a train I like to ride. Uh, I'm probably going to take a hard pass on him. Uh, I think, you know, the next two options and the only other two options I'm really looking at on this team would be Eric Gordon and Jeff Green. Uh, both those guys, very similar price tags, 4900 and 4800 Jeff Green's only center eligible, so that becomes... Uh, somewhat of an issue. Um, also, he's a great option because because he's only a center option. There's never any ownership that generally goes to him. Uh, and then you have Eric Gordon, who rejoined the starting lineup. Uh, injury prone as any player that could be. But you know what? He played 30 minutes in that last one. He put, put up 30 DK points at 4,900. That's a good value. Do you have uh, any interest? Or are you gravitating towards one of these other guy, one of these guys more than the other? Yeah, I think... Um... I mean, I wish you had for, some forward eligibility, but uh, Jeff, Jeff Green has looked great playing center for them. Um, he's he's kind of always been a man without a position his entire career, and I guess he was center this whole time. Um, yeah, he's he's kind of one of the only other guys, you know, Eric Gordon can a little bit, but who can create create his own shot and kind of look to actually create some offense that's not created from James Harden. Um and I think they trust him. You know, he got 32 minutes in the blowout the last game. Um, he's had a really consistent role throughout the bubble. Uh, he got a little bit of a price decrease down from 5,200 to 4,800. Um, I, I think especially in two stud builds, you can be pretty confident that Jeff Green's going to get another, you know, 32, probably 32 to 35 minutes, something in that range. Um, and we know we know D'Antoni doesn't play more than, um, you know, he plays eight, seven, eight guys basically, and he just kind of runs his starters into the ground uh, mm. in, in close in close games. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with Jeff Green. Um, I want to play Robert Covington, but the dude just doesn't shoot anymore. So you're really depending on, you know, the blocks and steals and him just kind of having an outlier rebounding game. And I don't know. I'll, I'm going to have to look at projections early tomorrow morning, but... Yeah, I mean, just the 6K price tag for a guy we know will, will be out there for 37, 38 minutes and if the game is close. Like, I don't know. I don't want to do it, but I might have to. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. So I, I, think I, those I wouldn't guys... trust him in cash, I don't think. Yeah. That's where I'm at with him. I think he's definitely still viable in tournaments because we know what his upside is. We've seen it before. Uh, this guy can get 50. We we know that. It's, right. it's in his arsenal. All he needs to do is grab double-digit rebounds, have his shot falling for him. The blocks and steals will come every game. So if he puts it all together, it's there. Um, and he's definitely, I don't expect uh, or anticipate much ownership to gravitate towards him either, um, especially with just the way that these other bench options on the team have been outperforming him. So I I can see using him in tournaments. Do I end up getting there? I don't know. He's also at a weird price tag where, um, you know, I, I, if I could, maybe if he's just filling small forward or something, there's like a few of those guys on uh, on the other side of the ball that we mentioned, less than 6K, like Steven Adams and Schroeder that, I still prefer. So there, it, it's tough. It really depends on, I, I guess, the way you're stacking this game and, and the contest that you're entering. For me, at least. That's, you know, I can't speak yeah. for everyone. That's just my my take on it. And sometimes, uh, you know, I'm not going to say sometimes. Hey, I'm a GPP player. A lot of times I'm wrong. Uh, a lot of times I'm right, though, too. So we'll, we'll, I'm hoping I'm on the right side of this one. Right. Uh, what about um, anybody? You know, I'm not really touching house. I'm not really touching uh pj tucker these guys just don't get it done for me and then now that gordon's back we're seeing rivers and macklemore uh play modest minutes they're, they're decent price tags but um not guys i'm really grad gravitating towards uh in this one i'll probably take a pass on them. yeah i think i would i would just 
if they, if they're the last piece kind of they're kind of last piece in players for me mm-hmm. where um maybe not Rivers and Macklemore as much but kind of all the other guys if it works with my lineup where I know they're going to get minutes in a pretty decent game environment sure I'll I'll put them in but I'm not not too excited about any any of the other ancillary guys all right, brother, let's keep it moving then. Uh, we are halfway through, so before we go any further, stop what you're doing. Uh, go check out my bookie. Uh, use the promo code HoopBall over there. Get a bunch of sweet bonuses, the match, matching some of your deposit, uh, and start betting some games. We have NBA playoffs flourishing right now. We have MLB going on. NFL is like only weeks away. It, it feels like it's creeping up on us. Uh, so go get some action, guys. You hear me talk about the parlays. I did uh, not end up winning my parlay. Uh, the one that I was talking about, I believe, with Santino last night. Uh, baseball did me in, and that's why I am an NBA guy, guy. So <laughs> I do know I do know a decent amount about baseball, but uh, not enough to be staking my reputation or, or loads of money on it. So I do small little parlays, and I have a great time over at my bookie. So check them out, guys. Promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L. So next game, brother, we have Orlando Magic going against the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> Uh, in this game right now, uh, let's see what the total is coming in at a whopping 227 and a half. So the same as that Houston OKC game, uh, Milwaukee is being favored by 12 and a half, which I, uh, I actually don't remember the exact spread, but I don't think it was 12 and a half. Uh, the last time these teams played, um, I right. think it was more along like the 10 or nine range. So we're seeing a little bit of a bigger spread after the bucks kind of got their pants pulled down on them. <laughs> Um, and we got to talk about it because Orlando is also playing with men down. Uh, as far as injuries are concerned right now, Aaron Gordon is the big name for the Magic that is popping up. He is questionable. Uh, missed that first game. He's been out for some time with some ha- with a hamstring strain. Um, I mean, I, I find it hard that they're going to rush him back, especially after they took a game. Uh, Michael Carter-Williams is being considered doubtful. Mo Bamba is out. And then uh, Jonathan Isaac, obviously, he tore his ACL. He is still out. And then... Um, yeah, I don't think the uh, the Bucks are really uh, dealing with much, man. They're 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 looking like they're good to go. So um, outside of Ursan, but uh, as you guys know, he's he's kind of uh, been dealing with a sprained elbow for quite some time, and that is difficult for a guy that relies on shooting heavily. So why don't we start with this Orlando Magic team, the one that upset him. Vucevic came out, blew the roof off the doors, was one of the highest scorers on the night for one of, one of the best point per dollar guys on the night are you willing to uh go back to him at all with this price increase no <laughs> i mean in tournaments you can i, th- I think uh, i think that was a real really i had a, I had a couple friends who they stacked vooch and um with a couple bucks on the other side and some of the magic value guys um i just I, it just ran so hot this game like I, I don't know how it's going to happen again. Um, the Bucks are too well coached. They're too good defensively. Um, I I think this is overall just a pretty big trap spot for people who want to go back to Orlando, uh, especially if Aaron Gordon. We won't get that news early in the day, so it'll be tough to kind of plan around some of the, these value plays. Where if Gordon is in there for even if he's on a minutes limit, twenty five to twenty eight minutes, you know that. That takes into Ross, that takes into Vooch's usage, that takes into Markel Fultz's usage, that kind of limits the upside of Ennis and Clark getting, you know, it, the minutes they've been getting the last couple games. Um, so, I mean, I still like the Fultz tag. It's, it's still good enough for me at 4,500. Um, I think he kind of ran a little bit bad with how well DJ Augustine played. So he, I think he easily could have gotten up to 33, 34 minutes if Augustine didn't play as well as he did. Um, so he would probably be the one play I would still be comfortable with uh, on this Magic team. But even then, it's still a tough, tough matchup. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. What do, you, what do you think about this bounce back game from Milwaukee? I'm with you. I'm not touching Vucevic at 8,800 in this matchup. I mean, listen, uh, I think this game is basically going to be about game scripting. And depending on how much exposure you're going to have to Milwaukee is going to determine how much exposure you're going to have to Orlando. Um, Everyone, I think, is going to still gravitate towards the value plays of Enos and Clark if I had to prefer one. 
Uh, it would probably be Enos, and that would be with Aaron Gordon off the floor. Uh, he just seems to be at like around a stable floor of about 20 DK points, which makes me feel a little bit comfortable with him if I, if I need to get him in there. Um, but outside of that, I'm, I'm going to go tried and true in what we stuck with. And it's Milwaukee's been getting cooked by the three-point shooting. Uh, Evan Fournier was absolutely terrible in this game. Uh, he only shot three of eight, just didn't look assertive, kind of struggled mightily on defense as well. Still managed to squeak out 20 DK points in what seemed like a terrible game. I, I feel like he didn't even have a point uh, up until like maybe uh, midway through the third quarter. But Possibly. <laughs> yeah, no, he was really struggling. Um, he's also a guy that he averaged about, you know, 29 to 30 DK points uh, against this team during the regular season. So um, I don't mind taking taking a nice little look at him at 5,100. It would be, you know, in complement to a play like, you know, maybe a Bledsoe, a Middleton, or Giannis on the other side. Markel Fultz, I agree, completely in play at 4,500. He's probably going to draw a fair amount of ownership. He had a ton of ownership um, at a price tag that was only, I think, like $300 less than him in that last game. Uh, just the fact that he was starting, people remember that this guy has triple-double upside. I, I don't think he's going to have it necessarily in this matchup. Um, but at 4,500, I don't mind taking a shot at him. And in, in kind of like in the same vein, uh, Terrence Ross, the three-point shooting, guys that – uh, aren't afraid to chuck it. He only shot three in that last one. Still managed to put up uh, 28 and a half DK points. Um, but in two out of the last four games, he shot at least 11 three-point attempts. And that could be the recipe uh, for success against Milwaukee. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I think I'm going to probably keep it under that 5.1 K mark. Um, and that's pretty much every option outside of Fook and Gordon. So, yeah, I do think there's some options on here. Um, I would just say, make sure that you're game scripting accordingly because it's 12 and a half point spread. If you're playing some of these big guys on, um, Milwaukee, you know, if you're playing Giannis, you're hoping that this game stays close so you can get 34 to 36 minutes out of the guy. And if that's the case, you're going to need someone to score on the other side of the ball. Yeah, um, I think Fournier, Fournier is a great tournament call. No, no one's going to play him after, you know, 36 minutes, 20 DK point performance. And kind of what I care about is he's on the floor for 36 minutes. And I think his shot upside is significantly higher than he showed in that last game. Um, he didn't, he didn't get a price increase at all. Um, while kind of the rest of the magic guys did, um, you know, James Ennis, $600 price increase Clark, he's still cheap, but you know, he got a $300 increase. Fultz got 300 bucks. Terrence Ross got 300 bucks. Um, so he's kind of the one guy who, who stayed stagnant. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's a good call tournament tournaments for Fournier. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And I'm, just because I, I like him for tournaments. I'm glad you mentioned that, and I, I should have. Uh, he's still – it's Fournier. He's very volatile. He's a shooting-reliant guy. He's a very scoring-dependent guy. So, um, you know, you're really banking on him in his shot falling and him taking and having the volume of shot attempts. Um, but I'm in the same same thought as you. Eight of shot attempts is too low for this guy. Uh, he's always in the double digits. The fact that he was down there, and I, I just can't see that happening again. If the shot falls – Milwaukee, uh, they tend to give them up. So, uh, anybody else on this Orlando team that we didn't mention already that you have kind of have any interest in? Or are you ready to move on to Milwaukee? Let's go to Milwaukee. All right, man. Bucks, we talked about it. Only Ursan really out. Giannis uh, is the big price tag. He came out and he was basically the, trying to will the Bucks back into this game in that last one. Uh, played fantastic, put up 31 points, 17 boards, seven assists, only had a steal. Um, no blocks, but 65.25 DK points. He's an 11-3 price tag. You talked about two studs. Uh, it might be tough to get Harden and Giannis in there when you're talking about using 30,000 of your 50K salary on two spots. <laughs> um, but is he a guy that you have any interest in? He kind of. I think I would rather go to LeBron. I think I would go Harden, LeBron, Giannis. Um, in, in that order of the mega studs. Um, he's he did get it. He did get a pretty big price increase. He's up to eleven three from ten five. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think it's kind of concerning that with um, uh, Bud was still only played him thirty four minutes, despite you know the Bucks being behind most of the game. Um, that that tells me they probably aren't taking this series all that seriously and that they're, you know, they're fine dropping a game rather than overextending their main guys and, you know, trying to somewhat keep them fresh for the next series. Um, and just that, that game overall, I think was more or less like a five, 5% five 
outcome, just in the way the Magic played, the way the Bucks defense played. Um, I, just, I just don't see that happening again. So 34 minutes, sure, it's definitely in play. But, you know, if he's down to th- at 31, 32, where, you know, if LeBron's at 40 again, um, I think in tournaments, absolutely. You know, he, I think he's probably going to be a little less popular with how well LeBron played. LeBron's probably going to garner more, more ownership. But I think I would, I think I would hold him to tournaments only. Uh, I don't blame you for that. I mean, there's not the, the the best matchup. We know Orlando generally slows the pace down. There's a 12 and a half point spread. Um, all that screams, you know, kind of stay away in cash game. So um, outside of that, I actually prefer him over LeBron in tournaments. Um, that's oh, kind okay. of the ownership. As far as ownership, no, not necessarily ownership. I just think on uh, just an overall raw, raw points perspective, I mean, they're only separated by $400 anyway. So at that point, you know, you'll make it work if you want one of those guys regardless. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just think that Milwaukee is going to bounce back in a big way. I think Giannis knows, and he's he's been in these situations before. He doesn't, you know, he knows with the Bucks uh, how poor they were playing coming into the playoff series where he's going to kind of have to will this team. And, you said it yourself, I think, and I kind of agree. Why did you know? Why did uh, Mike only play him 34 minutes? And uh, I was kind of thinking the same thing as well. Maybe they just kind of figured this game was getting out of hand. Let's save him fresh for the next, or whatever it might have been. Um, they're not going to. They're not going to want to go down 2-0. And if this game's closed, you best believe Giannis is going to play as much minutes in the fourth quarter as he possibly can. So yeah. um, I, I don't. I don't mind taking a look at this guy again. Uh, he's just he's the Greek freak man for a reason. He's he's, he's in my opinion the MVP. Um, I know Absolutely. it's debatable and uh, arguable uh, against your guy. You know LeBron. I know I, I said your guy because we were just talking about <laughs> them. I know you're not necessarily in that camp, uh, but I, I think we can take a look at him, Middleton, and Blood. So again, again, I think these guys are going to be purely on game script and how you're looking at this game and who you're playing from Orlando. If you're just looking to play Gary Clark or James Enos, maybe you don't gravitate towards these big three as much. Uh, just because, you know, it's it just doesn't correlate. You're going to need some of the score, and I doubt James Enos is going to be putting up 25 actual points. That would probably be reserved for a guy like Fournier, uh, Vucevic, or Fultz. So if you're looking at those three guys, maybe two of those three, you run it back with a Giannis, you run it back with a Middleton or a Bledsoe, um, and just hope that this game actually stays close, which for at this point in time, after they just lost that first one, I don't see why it can't. Uh, I think, you know, Milwaukee's still very much going to win this series. I think, you know, Magic might not win another game, uh, but I don't think that they're necessarily a 12 and a, a, 12 and a half point uh, dog in this one. Um, I think it, that's that's a little bit of a, a little bit of an aggressive spread. I think, you know, maybe like nine and a half to 10 is probably where they should be. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Um, I think Lopez really underperformed in that last one at 5K. I wouldn't mind looking at him. I think I prefer... Steven Adams, but um, Lopez won't have any ownership. Uh, I think everybody that's game log, log watching and sees that Adams game over Lopez at a similar price tag, he's only $600 more, will immediately just go to Adams. And I, I probably will do the same in most of my lineups, um, but I think Lopez makes for a solid pivot. Um, you know, even if you wanted to run out something like just Lopez and Fournier, uh, I could see that being like a really, really, really low owned uh, way to do, kind of approach this game. Um, now, I don't yeah. know if I'm going to be doing that in a whole bunch of lineups, but I'll, I'll definitely have like at least one or two, three builds like that in my 20 entry max. Yeah, um, uh, for cash games, I'm definitely looking at Bledsoe and Lopez again. Um, they're just kind of too cheap. Um, I think mm-hmm. we got 30 minutes out of Lopez and only 15 DK points. Like he's historically, he's o- o- over a one, one point, uh, one fantasy point per minute guy. Um, and just for just thinking logically about the matchup against Fuchs, you know, a big body guy, that's kind of what Brooke Lopez is on the team for. Like they don't, they don't want Marvin Williams guarding Vooch all that much. And I don't think they really want Robin Lopez in their playoff rotation. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, 30 minutes for 5k for Brooke, I think is excellent, excellent by low spot. Um, Eric Bledsoe, I, just wish they would extend him a little bit more. Um, but I think he kind of got the Giannis treatment in the sense that I think uh, Budenholzer might have given up on the game. Um, but if he's up, you know, 32, 33 minutes at 5,300, it's just way too, it's just way too cheap for, for who he is as a player. 
Yeah, I think George. I think George Hill was balling out pretty well too. So I mean, like when he when George Hill plays well, uh, Boots just keeps him on the court. Right. Um, there's there's no reason that you know George Hill has the veteran experience. He has playoff experience. He's at all everything that you're kind of looking for as a guy that's going to be playing, you know, 23 to 28 minutes on a nightly basis during a playoff rotation. So uh, that's the one thing. If if Bledsoe's hot, he's going to stay in. Um, I, I don't think that's going to change. But I, I agree with you. I think that price tag is just a little too cheap for where he should be. Uh, that that's about it for me on Milwaukee. All right, brother. Um, yeah, I think the only other guy worth mentioning, um, you know, Wesley Matthews uh, played 26 minutes. starts. He's only 3,200. Um, you know, if it works, sure, why not? I know I was messing around with a couple of builds before where I had, uh, you know, maybe uh, I think it was like a, I had like a Davis uh, Harden build going. Um, and I, I had to, two spots left with about $3,100 average. So Derek Jones Jr. and Wesley Matthews happened to fit in it. So I'm going to run it out there for one, and we'll see how it works. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of ugly when you think about it. But that's the thing, man. It's a GPP. How many people out there have Derek Jones and Wesley Matthews in their lineups? We'll find out. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll exactly. see, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't expect much from it, but you got 20 to throw out there. Let's see what happens. Portland yeah, versus lottery somehow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Portland versus LA. Uh, this game, another one of those upsets that we got to see. Portland just playing some of the best basketball at the best time that they possibly could. Two twenty nine game total. Lakers favored by six and a half. As uh, as far as injuries are concerned for this game, Anthony Davis and LeBron are both probable. Rajon Rondo is being considered questionable right now. He was ruled out of that last one. Zach Collins is still out, as is Nazir uh, Little and CJ McCollum. Uh, with a uh, spinal, or did you see that actually interview? I almost said spinal like he did. Uh, verte- a vertebrae <laughs> fracture uh, is available, but the the interview he had that was hilarious, where he was kind of uh, you know making a little joke about Mike Tyson doing the, the interview that Mike Tyson right. did back in the day <laughs> in the ring. He said, "I broke my back, and I, I can't even do it like CJ did." Uh, but it was spinal, and uh, go shout out to CJ. That was actually pretty pretty hilarious, but. Uh, we'll start with this Portland team, man. Uh, Damian Lillard, he's up there. He's one of these priced, high-priced guys at 11K. Are you playing him at all? Not, not in cash games. Uh, I mean, he's easily been the most fun guy to watch in the bubble for me. But, I mean, man, it's, it's just so much has to go right. I think he has to, for him to pay off this price tag. Um, you know, he's got to score 40 real-life points to kind of – really even get close to paying off value, which is it's just a tough matchup for him against this Laker defense and Laker pace. Um, so I think he, I think he's a great, great tournament play off kind of all the, all the rest of the studs because Harden's going to be more popular. Giannis is going to be more popular. LeBron is going to be more popular off his big game. Um, most likely Davis will be more popular as well. Um, so I think he probably comes in fifth in ownership um so i wouldn't mind you know maybe maybe you do a double stud lineup with uh lillard and davis and get some really great correlation that way and you're kind of fading you're still accessing massive massive upside but you're fading kind of all the ownership of harden lebron and Giannis. um so just an idea for tournaments but most of these guys are kind of turn turn just more tournament plays for me. I'm not they're a little expensive for cash games. Um, mm-hmm. Gary Trent maybe especially since he has guard and small forward eligibility, but um, yeah, none of these guys are really cracking my builds. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same. I'm not I'm not really landing on uh, Lillard. 11k is a hefty price tag. And listen, he's He's getting the minutes. It's Damian Lillard. I don't think we can debate how good this guy is at this point. And, you know, the shot attempts, the usage, everything's going to be there for him. But um, I just I just see a few other guys I prefer over him around that price tag. And I, right. I just can't see myself landing on him, especially knowing that we have so many other guards that we could go to as well. Uh, Nurkic, the power forward eligibility helps. Probably the only spot where I'm really looking at him. I don't think he's a great center play. Try not to target too many bigs going against the Lakers, knowing that they could throw, you know, McGee, Howard, and Davis at him. Uh, yeah. McCollum, 7,700. It's a fair price tag for him. He's playing a boatload of minutes as well. Um, I, I don't mind him out of the three I just named. He's probably the guy I might have shares with. But let that be with the caveat. I've, I've never gotten CJ McCollum right. 
It's been about three. It's been about three or four times in my entire DFS six year career that I maybe gotten CJ McCollum right. right. Um, but I think we're just looking at the pricing discrepancies between these guys, I, I'm really if I'm playing anyone, it's probably Anthony. It's probably Whiteside. Um, you know, Whiteside. This is just his type of matchup. I think that. Uh, 26 minutes in the last game is something that can be indicative of what we could see going forward. When you look at Nurkic, he barely played uh, more than him. The, and it's just because of how big that the Lakers do play. And Anthony Davis refuses to play center. It is not going to change all of a sudden in the middle of the playoff series. So do I expect Whiteside to block another five shots? No, probably not. But he's a guy that if you give him 24, 25 minutes, we know his point per minute upside uh, could be anywhere between 30 to 35 DK points pretty easily. Um, does have a low floor as well, so maybe he's more of a tournament type play. I wouldn't really trust him as much in cash. Steven Adams or one of those other guys that we mentioned might be the better cash game play. But 4,900, I think uh, Hassan Whiteside is very much in play. And where I actually run into a problem is like him and Jeff Green, uh, both center eligible, both pretty much the same yeah. price tag. So I'm going to ask you, uh, do you favor one more than the other? I would probably play Jeff Green in cash, Whiteside in tournaments. Um, I think what's great about Whiteside's just minutes floor is they seem to be pretty willing to play him and Nurkic together. So that kind of gives you a couple outs to, for him to get to that 24, 25 minute range that we're looking for from him um, to kind of get access to that big upside. And, you know, Nurkic, he's one of the most foul prone guys in the NBA and can easily get two fouls instantly in the first three minutes. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get a, you know, a 12 minute white side stint in the first quarter into the second quarter. Um, it's definitely within the range of outcomes um, in this game. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I just, I just trust Jeff Green's minutes floor significantly more because, I mean, I think white side is super volatile. He could be anywhere from like 13 to 14 to what we saw last game to 25. Um, but I think he definitely makes a great pivot off. Adams, off Brooke Lopez, off Jeff Green, all these guys who are probably going to be uh, significantly more popular. Yeah, and I, and I think um, kind of the same sentiment. I, I think Anthony is also just uh, slightly underpriced for the amount of workload that he's getting. He, you know, at least 30, 35 minutes out of the past four games, played 38 minutes back-to-back games. Only put up an 11-point double-double, so struggled with a shot attempt, but he was able to get it done in different ways. So uh, at 5,900, I don't mind taking a stab at him here and there. Got that small forward eligibility. So I, I think those are the two guys I'd probably be gravitating towards the most. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think I'll end up having too many shares of Lillard. And that, you know, maybe I'll be wrong on that one. And he's beaten me a few times. I wrote him a lot during the bubble, but there was a few of the nights that he did beat me. So maybe I'll be wrong again and I'll take one off the chin. But I would also don't anticipate guys like Harden and Giannis are, are too far behind him. Um and that's basically what it comes down to, those guys. I know Lillard's floor is much lower um, than a guy like Giannis and a guy like Harden with no Westbrook on the floor. So that's that's kind of where I'm I'm landing with him. So uh, other yeah, than that, I think I think the way you you use Lillard is um, as kind of as I said earlier, just as you know, maybe Harden only gets 58 again. You know, maybe Gian- Giannis and LeBron are like in the mid 50s, and Dame scores. 55 real life points, something along those lines, which is well within the range of outcomes of this game. Um, and you, you're just going to get him at significantly less ownership. And when you're trying to bink, you know, a 10,000 plus person tournament, you kind of you need to get a little creative with with your builds. You can't just completely follow the, the good chalky plays. And he he will project as the worst expensive spend. But you're also going to get significantly less ownership with him, and we know the upside he has access to. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's he's a large field tournament pivot off the far more popular expensive spends. Very well said. And yeah, I'm not touching when you Gabriel. I don't care if he starts. Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I'm good with that. You touched on Gary Trent. I, I generally don't have too much interest in Gary Trent. 5K, I mean, he's been playing fantastic in the bubble, but. Even in some of his good games, you know, you're looking at a ceiling of about 30 DK points. 4,800, you know, you need him to click on most of the cylinders to get you to where you need to be, but there's still the, the floor that we just seen in that last game as well. So I think there's a few other guys on this four-game site that I prefer around that same price tag. You know, maybe it's like a Terrence Ross, uh, a couple of these other guys that we talked about are only a couple hundred dollars off too. So uh, I, don't, I don't think I'll end up falling on Trent too much, but... 
Um, Blakers, man. I think for me, it just really comes down to two people. It's Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I think you yeah. already said who you prefer. Uh, are you on? Uh, are you on LeBron? Yeah, I mean, just I, I just want to kind of read his rates. The last game, just it's just absolutely ridiculous. He had only a twenty six point five percent usage rate, a seventy nine point seven percent assist rate, and an eighteen point nine percent rebound rate. Uh, in that last game with uh, being on the floor 41 minutes. Um, that's just ridiculous. Like, um, just the level of ball control he's at right now. Um, he doesn't trust anybody. He doesn't, uh, to for creation. Um, and I think he's probably, there's a good chance he looks for a shot a little more in this game. He only got to the line. He only shot seven free throws. Um, he didn't see it huge. I don't think he saw a price hike at all. Uh, only a two hundred dollar price hike from the last game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm in on him again. I, just, I have to be. Just the way, the way he controlled that game, it's, it's just like he basically every possession he was on the floor, it, the ball ran through him. Yeah, I, I don't mind going back to LeBron. I'm not going to sit here and say don't play him. Uh, like I already said, though, I think I, I'm, I probably prefer Giannis over him. I uh, definitely prefer James Harden over him. And um, I think after Anthony Davis burned some people, just in an actual basketball sense, because I don't think he burned us too bad at DFS. I mean, we might have been hoping for a bigger game, but he still put up, you know, 52 DK points when right. he shot 8 of 24. Um, this is a matchup he could fully take advantage of, and I, I expect him to bounce back from this game. Um, you know, I think against Wenyan Gabriel earlier in the year, he actually faced him, and he dropped, I think it was like 30, 36 actual points. So I'm I'm okay with going back to Davis. So I, I'd probably prefer to do that um, in tournaments over LeBron and cash. You can never go wrong with LeBron James. You just know what you're getting from him night in and night out. We've seen a 30 point floor from Davis where that could scare you off a little bit in cash, and I don't blame you. So I think, uh, but in tournaments, I, I'm going to play Davis over him. Uh, I'm going to go back to that well. I'm going to hope that I can cash in, and I think at the very least you're looking at a 50 point floor from him. I think that's what we saw in that last game, which was his floor type game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think Davis Davis is kind of that another same, kind of same boat as Lillard, where people aren't going to be all that willing to click on his name, and he's priced right there with Giannis, Harden, LeBron, um, all these guys. And you know, he had 17 free throw attempts the past game, uh, four four blocks and steals. Um, he's probably not going to shoot eight for 24 again. So, yeah, uh, great tournament play. Yeah, and I can't see myself playing Kyle Kuzma at 6,500. You couldn't pay me to do that. No, uh, he, he, he has played 30 minutes over in three of the last uh, four games. Uh, but he's, it's not like he's getting usage when he's playing next to LeBron or, or next to AD. It's just not happening. Uh, and then you could play guard roulette if you happen to land on one of these guys. Do I gravitate towards uh, more towards any one of them? Um, you know, that being said, you know, with KCP, Danny Green, Deion Waiters, um, if I had to play one of them, it would probably be Danny Green, 3,900. But, um, yeah, I think we have better oh, options. The, really... the Danny Green experiences. Uh, I, I had I had him the last slate and just kind of begging him to do anything. And thankfully, LeBron Le, LeBron carried carried his weight for him. But just, man, it's he's, he's a rough roster. But, he, I mean, he's in play. He has to be in play. Um, he, had, he was in foul trouble most of the game. He had... Still at 24 minutes. I think if he stays out of foul trouble, he's going to get 32, 33, something along there. And for 3,900, you know, we we need value on this slate. Um, it's not a fun roster. It's not one I particularly want to do, but um, he's he's there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, that's kind of my sentiments with him too. He'll probably play more. Uh, this dude just couldn't knock down an open three. He had about three opportunities that he just tanked. Wide open yeah. threes, uh, and that's not like Danny Green. And we know this guy to be a clutch playoff shooter. Uh, he, like you said, he was in foul trouble for a majority of the game. So there's a decent chance a lot of that changes. Um, you know, he's going to be relied on more or less for his defense in this starting lineup more than offense. But LeBron, I'm still shocked that he was able to even get like what was it like 16 assists to this team. Right. Uh, I, I don't even remember 16 people other than LeBron making a basket uh, uh, during this game. So. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of where I'll draw the line. I'm not gonna. Yeah, you know, I've I've played Biggie. I've played Howard when it just lands on it. 
hoping to capture that upside, but it, it's tough, man. I, it, you know, they're dart throws or GPP flyers at best. If you're making 150 lineups, you want them in a few, sure, go for it. But uh, for me, it's really going to be Davis. You know, very minuscule LeBron just because of my other guys. I'm going to take my stance on that and hope I don't take one off the chin on it. And then uh, I'll have a couple of shares of Danny Green as well. And that's probably it for me the, on the Lakers. Yeah, same for me. Um, I have no interest in KCP, no interest in, in either of the centers. They, they're they're, they're going to play about 25 minutes between the both of them every game. Um, and no one else just really plays enough minutes to be fantasy viable. All right, brother. Well, that looks like that's all we have, right? At 59 minutes, so just under the hour mark. I uh, appreciate you uh, you jumping on with me, man, and, and running through this. Always bringing some some wonderful insight. Uh, we're we're getting some good rhythm going, and I, I love checking out your article. So if if you guys haven't already, um, a lot of this content that we have normally behind a paywall over at Hoopball for our premium subscribers, we're allowing people to uh, read and listen to for free. So uh, this is your opportunity. Go check out Aaron's stuff in our layup line. We'll have the article posted as early as possible in the morning for you guys, right on your way to work. When you get in, have your cup of coffee before your boss makes you sit down and check out the article, get the good information out there. And if you could give us a follow on Twitter, you can find me at Mike Apatria. That's M I K E A P O T R I A. Aaron, let the good people know where they can find you. Yeah, I'm at, at Asmus sports, A S M U S S P O R T S. And please hit me up on Twitter. Um, I think one of the, biggest reasons i started getting uh better at dfs was i started collaborating with people and you know i think hoopball is a great platform to kind of just maybe start reaching out to people on the forums reach out to some you know the people writing the articles the content uh start asking questions and i i think that's one of the biggest strongest tools to become a better player is you know, just really learning from each other, honestly, and bouncing ideas off each other. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions about the slate. Absolutely. You guys heard it. Uh, Abuse that. Abuse it. Uh, Aaron (laughs) said, come, come rattle all your questions off to him on Twitter and he will answer them. And there is not a lot of pros out there that are willing to do that kind of thing. So uh, I would say take advantage of it. And I'm with you. You can always reach out to me on Twitter as well. Um, Hey, uh, I, I, listen, Hoopball's got a great thing going on over here, guys. Use it. Take advantage of it. I love your collaboration uh, mention in peace right there, man, because you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, the number one thing that could sink your ship is just thinking you know it all. Uh, and, right. you know, this is, there's not a chance. There's always a bigger fish in the pond. Um you know, I, I, I always try to eat a nice slow, a slice of humble pie, even when I'm doing well, just because I know that um, you really have to put in the time. You really have to put in the, the effort and the dedication into being successful on this on a daily basis. And just jumping on once in a while and getting it right uh, does not mean that you are all of a sudden a guy that could be doing this full time. It is not that easy. So uh, collaborate, pick brains. I would I, I highly recommend it. I'm right there with you, Aaron. And then definitely pick Aaron's brain. He's sitting here offering it to you guys. Jump in that noggin. Get that information. But uh, that's all we have for you guys over here at Hoopball uh, DFS today. We will be back tomorrow. Um, I will be on the slate. Who am I breaking this down with? I am a terrible person for never remembering it. Uh, I will be on tomorrow. We are breaking down. uh, Oh, no, no. I lied. It's going to be Santino, I believe. Uh, So I will not be on. Uh, Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll check the schedule either way. My mind, my mind's going crazy. But anything you want to leave? Anything you want to leave us with, Aaron? Before we take off out of here? No, it's gonna be a fun slate, and uh, let's keep crushing. Absolutely, guys. Let's get it. So, take care. Good luck. Let's take down some GPPs. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.